This episode is sponsored by Skillshare. 2018's Shadow is a fantasy political thriller. Set in a fictional period in China, it tells the story of a body double, a shadow whose entire existence is to cover for the commander in chief. But we aren't here to talk about the story. If you aren't mesmerized by the stunning visuals yet, you have no soul. Director Zhang Yimou is well known for making visual masterpieces. In this area, he is one of the greatest living directors, right up there with the likes of Wes Anderson. But for Shadow, he went full Tim Burton, adopting a colorless Chinese inkwash visual, and it is unlike anything I have seen before. Adopting this visual is not easy, unlike Western scenery paintings, which at least have a style that focuses on naturalistic light and compositions. Inkwash paintings are paintings of ideas. Subject matters are often limited. Details are sparse. The more three-dimensional a film is, the harder it is to feel like inkwash. Even the best 3D animations in China can only allude to some visual elements. So how on earth does a live-action movie manage to capture the spirit so well? Today, we'll be diving into the visual of Shadow, and see how Zhang Yimou and his team achieved the unique ink painting look. And through this, let's learn to appreciate this director. Sit tight, it's gonna be a feast for your eyes. The visual of Shadow is generally agreed to be absolutely amazing. But shouldn't the credit goes to the cinematographer? Well, not exclusively. Black and white movies are never truly black and white, but grayscale. Even a film noir movie feels pretty gray looking when put next to Shadow, which ironically is actually in color. This goes to show that to achieve that inkwash look, you need a lot more than just set the saturation to zero. In order to capture the feel, the film has to achieve three things. First is the contrast. Inkwash painting is, of course, mainly in black and white, with few shades of gray in between. To achieve this, the production designer carefully crafts every prop, from the armor to wooden furniture, in black and white. As a result, Nothing feels great, keyword being feel. When layers of mist meet the dark bamboo, it technically displays as shades of gray. But our brains don't perceive it that way. We know fog is white, just like we know ink is black. In our mind, we feel the contrast. However, it's not enough for things to be in black and white. See. Characters don't always wear solid black or pure white. Often their costumes have these soft and flowing patterns on them, recreating the signature soft edges in inkwash paintings. Fog, rain, layers upon layers of translucent fabric all further accentuate this soft visual. Even the lighting is surprisingly soft. Blur out is seen from a film noir, the highlights still pop. Blur out this film, and you get a very consistent shade of gray. In other words, it's not just black and white. It has to have softness. That is the second point. And then there's the final point, ironically, is the use of color. Black and white ink paintings are not technically black and white. Traditional Chinese ink paintings are made on rice paper, or other forms of fabric like silk. In either case, the canvas gains a shade of yellow over time. That's usually how people experience these paintings, with an aged flesh tone background. If you adjust the painting so the paper is pure white, suddenly something feels off. Throughout the film, human flesh is the only color that consistently pops. Even blood is desaturated. And as much as black and white accentuate colors, colors also anchors black and white. Desaturate the image, and the visual feels gray again. The use of color 
paradoxically makes the film feel even more like black and white in wash paintings. To achieve this look, an enormous amount of details are considered. It requires careful communications and collaborations between multiple departments. While the cinematography certainly is something to behold, there is also the production design and the color grading. This level of cohesiveness requires vision. That's why Zhang Yimou is such a great director. You know what I've been binging lately? Skillshare classes. No joke, in preparation for this video, I have to learn the technique of painting. It's like watching Bob Ross. Even if I don't intend on painting, it's still entertaining and good to learn more. In case you don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to explore their creativity. A quick search on Skillshare and you can find numerous classes on painting alone. Watercolor, acrylic, even digital. Currently, I'm watching Botanical Illustration by Sarah Boccasini Meadows. With professional presentation, it's not only educational, it's actually pretty entertaining. Flexible and affordable, an annual subscription is less than $10 a month. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a 2-month free trial of premium membership, so you can explore your creativity. Give Skillshare a try, let's learn and have fun doing it. Now, in Chinese painting, there's this technique called Liu Bai, leaving it empty. In this painting of a fisherman, the vast majority of the frame is empty. Yet, you can feel the stillness of the wind and water, the vastness of the lake. And the only movement is the gentle bobbing of the boat, hinted at by the faint brushstrokes of waves. This is what I mean when I said Chinese paintings are paintings of ideas, or in Chinese, yi jing. It's about not painting what is there, and painting what is not there. This technique is used in shots like this one, where instead of showing the scale of the cave, the film leaves everything shrouded in darkness, which not only implies the depth, but adds to the secrecy of the scene. Despite endless rain, the sky is always paper white. The ominous cloudy weather is felt without being shown. The wind is ever present even in indoor scenes. People's hair dancing gently in the breeze. All these unshown or invisible elements build a mood in a similar fashion as in wash painting. Serene and in parts, sinister. But beyond the mood building, the technique of leaving details out is also used for purely aesthetic purposes, like the texture of the wooden furniture, including the wooden instruments. Compare this to this shot in Hero. See how the same instrument has color and gradient? The curved edges give off large reflective highlights. It feels three-dimensional. In Shadow, the highlights are dull and thin, and the entire thing is just dark gray, as if it's painted in one stroke. The film puts much more emphasis on shapes rather than detailed textures, aligning with the aesthetic of ink paintings. It doesn't just feel like a painting, it works like a painting. So, why Chinese ink wash paintings? In his past works, Zhang's use of color is hit or miss. In the Ro home, the flashback is in color, and the present day is in black and white. It deliberately goes against tradition, making the flashbacks feel extra nostalgic and the present even grimmer. His use of color in Hero and Golden Flower, however, is pretty much arbitrary. Now, that's not to say arbitrary use of style is bad. I can really tell you why the Grand Budapest Hotel looks like a pastel painting other than it looks good but it does not mean it's a bad film. But for Shadow, the black and white aesthetic ties into the film's story surprisingly well. The film is about the power struggle between a commander and his body double, who's called a Shadow. The choice for black and white visual is self-explanatory, but throughout the film, the body double is the one out in the open, and the commander is the one hiding in the shadows, 
Like their costumes, neither of them is consistently black or white. Sometimes the character looks like he's painted on paper, other times he looks like he's drawn with white ink. The repeated use of Tai Chi symbol shows that there is at least some intentionality to it. As the symbol shows, there is white in black and there's yin in yang. Still, the commander is the one giving orders. He is the one whose will matters in this story. It is like in paintings. What isn't painted, what remains hidden, is often the spirit of the image. Is it a solid connection? Debatable, but it is there. The style certainly has more meaning in there than it is in Hero and Golden Flower, and arguably more nuanced than the Rohom and Red Lantern. It goes to show that, for a director who's often accused of style over substance, he is stepping up his game. But at the end of the day, it just feels right. I know it's not very analytical, but there's just something that works that is beyond words. I just can't imagine any other visual style that suits this film better. Isn't that enough of a justification? The greatest thing about the visual of Shadow is that it actually doesn't look that much like a Chinese painting, but it feels like one. Zhang Yimou captured the spirit of the art. Zhang's understanding of Chinese art is very contemporary. Many elements that feel Chinese in his films are either recent inventions or taken from other cultures. That one-shot kill move in Hero is much more Japanese than it is Chinese. It works in the strange tone of Sui Ha Wuxia films, but it feels unintentionally funny in a political drama. Yeah, not everything in Shadow is a slam dunk. Over the years, Zhang Yimou garnered a lot of criticism for watering down Chinese culture. I'll admit, I was one of those critics. Traditional Chinese culture suffered greatly in the past hundred years. I was afraid the thing I loved would change, get turned into a knockoff of Japanese culture. But Zhang continues to do it, and do it with such commitment and confidence, he owns it. His sense of aesthetic focused more on the feel rather than the form, making it very accessible. With hindsight, I realized cultures change and more. While many Chinese artists still get hung up on the glory days, cultural workers like Zhang Yimou is pushing the art form forward. There may be missteps here and there, but I would gladly take that growing pain if it means we are moving forward. If this is what people remember Chinese art to be, sign me up. Also, Zhang Yimou would make a killer Mortal Kombat movie. <laughs>